Let's look at type 2 binary compounds and how to name the compounds and then how to determine the formula from the compound's name. Now, in type 2 binary compounds, we're looking again at metals bonding with nonmetals. Metals like to become cations when they bond. They lose their valence electrons and take on a positive charge. Nonmetals are anons. They gain electrons in their valence shell and obtain a negative charge. Type 2 binary compounds are where we are using metals that are transitional metals. Those metals that have more than one common charge on their ions. Whereas type 1 binary compounds are where the metal has only one particular charge on its ion. Okay, so let's have an example here. Here's an example. We have FeO, and then let's also have second one, Fe2O3. Here are two compounds. Okay, both contain iron and both contain oxygen. Okay? But iron is a transitional metal. So it forms cations, positively charged ions, but its charge will vary from compound to compound. And so we have to recognize that. So when we use transitional metals, we name them similarly as type 1 compounds. We still identify the two elements involved, iron and oxygen on both of these okay. similarly as type 1 compounds do we take the anon that is involved here which would be oxide we change that ending on both so that we have an oxide to represent that anon. But both of these compounds cannot be called iron oxide because if they are, how do we know which iron oxide? So we have to add an additional detail when naming type 2 binary compounds. That detail is the charge on the irons on the cation. We have to label that in the name. So we can differentiate between FeO and Fe2O3. So what is the charge of that iron? Let's use our ions table. We know that all compounds are charge neutral. Oxide is commonly a negative 2 charge. We know that compounds have a neutral charge, a zero charge, so this single iron cation must be a plus two charge to go with that negative two to equal zero. On this compound, we have two of the Fe's three of the oxides. Again, compounds are charge neutral. Each one of these oxides are carrying a negative two charge. So that's giving us a total of negative six. Each one of these iron must be carrying a plus three charge plus 3 and plus 3 is a total of positive 6. 6 minus 6 is equal to 0. So how we differentiate the names of these two compounds, we use their charge so that we can recognize which iron is present in either compound. So this would be iron. Use Roman numerals to represent the charge in the name. 
2, Roman numeral 2, to represent that plus 2 charge. And here we would have iron oxide, but we would need to represent it with the Roman numeral 3. So we would have iron Roman numeral 3 to represent the charge of the individual iron cations here. Iron 3 oxide. Let's try another one. Here's a formula. CuBr. Okay. We first recognize that copper is a transitional metal. We label our elements involved, copper and bromine. We know that on these binary compounds, we need to change the bromine to bromide. The anion gets changed. So let's go ahead and do that. So we have bromide. But we're missing one detail, and that is the label of this copper. So we need to determine its charge. Bromine, when it becomes the anion bromide, it carries a negative one charge. Copper is a transition metal, so it may be varying charges. But we know that together, our cations and our anons add together with a zero net charge on our compound. So this individual copper must be a plus one because 1 minus 1 equals 0, and compounds are charged neutral. So the proper name for this compound is copper 1. Use the Roman numeral to represent the charge of the individual copper. Copper 1 bromide. Copper 1 bromide. Now, let's reverse this. Let's start with a name and then generate a formula. Let's try cobalt, 2, chloride, and let's try nickel, 2, oxide. Okay, first thing, we recognize we have cobalt. CO. We have chloride coming from chlorine, so we have our two element symbols involved. Cobalt and chlorine are the two elements here, so that's our two ions, this chloride ion and this cobalt ion, but we need to represent their charges so that we can determine that proper ratio. Chloride carries a negative one ion charge. Cobalt is a transitional metal. The Roman numeral tells us it's carrying a plus two charge. Those are our two ions, the cobalt plus two and the chlorine with the negative one to be the chloride ion. To get the proper ratio so that charge neutral occurs with the compound, we again do the crossing over, cobalt, chloride, and two right here. To check ourselves, to make sure it's charge neutral, our cobalt is carrying a plus two charge. We have two chloride ions, each one with a negative one charge. Two minus one minus one equals zero. That's charge neutral. So cobalt two chloride is CoCl2. Now, let's try it here with the nickel to oxide. Nickel is Ni. The Roman numeral is telling us that the nickel is carrying a plus two charge. Oxide ion is coming from oxygen and oxide carries a negative two charge. So here are our two ions involved. We again do the crossing over to get Ni2O2. 
But now these ions, we should show them in their simplest whole number ratio. So 2 and 2 is really a 1 to 1 ratio. So it would be listed as NiO, nickel 2 oxide, with the 2 being representative of the charge on the nickel. Okay. Hopefully this will help with naming type 2 binary compounds where the metal cation is coming from a transitional metal that has varying charges.